Hello, Rational fans. Just finished watching NXT No Mercy 2024. Um, Uma Fima defending his North American Championship against Tony Dadon with Mafia members of ringside. Good match. I enjoyed it. These guys just slugged it out once that bell rang. Exchange of punches, a forearm shot. That Tony won the exchange. Then delivered a fisherman style suplex. Uh, fall away slam, overhead toss, belly to belly suplex. All those moves, one after the other, Uma Fima kicked out. Uma Fima obviously whipped him in the corner. Delivered running uppercuts in the corner. Put him outside the ring. And then he grabbed hold of Luca and pulled out a crowbar. How the hell did he know Luca had a crowbar? Stuck his out of his jacket. And when she shoved Luca down, hit top stacks with a crowbar, ran at Tony. Tony moved out of the way. Uma Fima hit the still steps. Got back to the ring. Tony speared his ass, and I thought that was it. All right, Uma Fima kicked out. Delivered one hell of a power bomb. Then the combat kind of delivered. It's awesome what he does. He picks him up and power bombs him. But when he does, he tosses him halfway across the ring when he does it. Tony got up, closed lines, DDT on the edge of the mat. Picked him up, top rope, back body drop. Picked him up and delivered the spine buster. Uma Fima kicked out, power bomb, sit down, power bomb, and still your dominant juggernaut, the North American champion, Uma Fima. That guy is not going to lose that championship at all. If he does, it's going to be a miracle if someone actually could beat him. Next up, Roxanne Perez defending her NXT Women's Championship against number one contender who won a gauntlet in match, Jada Parker. Was not. Expect high expectations in this match, and I was right. And I noticed Roxanne Perez, every match she's in, she quickly attacks the opponent and tries to win the match. This match, she showed Bowden. And then instead of trying to win the match, just wants to punish Jada Parker, who had her side taped up. Like, they never explained if she was injured in the gauntlet match or what. Roxanne, the elbow drops on the side, slaps, um, chops, kicks. Then a part of ring is a Saturn submission. Then she let go of it. So Jada Parker could easily overpower out with a fallaway slam. Then Jada Parker delivered that top rope ass drop, which she never connects with it. Instead, like, instead of coming down full force, she kind of like slides off of her opponent. Like she's going down a slide. And she gets a two count. I'm like, come on, right? Roxanne kicked out. They fought outside. Roxanne delivered hot pox. After Jada Parker ran her ass through a barricade, rolled her back of the ring, second hot pox, finally the match is over with, thank God. Roxanne retained her championship. Oh, still in the match, Jada Parker did that running ass to the face, and again, she hits the ropes, never touches the opponent. So it must be the smell that knocks him out for a two or three count. After the match, uh, Warnham debuted it. Her name is G U L L A N A. I don't know who the hell she is. She looks like if you play WWE video games, if you take Ollie, Valkyrie, and Asuka and mix them up, that's what she looks like. A mixture of them. She came out, stared at Roxanne. I guess this is the one that was backstage Tuesday night that shocked Roxanne to Jada Parker. I don't know who the hell she is. But it looks like that's the next title feud. Before the main event, The Rock's daughter announced that on NXT this week, Lexus King... Versus Metaphors, Muna, Una Mesu, and a number one contenders match. Hank and Tank versus Gallus, Wolfgang, and Mike Coffey versus the Rascals, MSK members, Trey Miguel, and X Division champion from TNA West. I don't think they're going to win the match to face Nathan Fraser X Young. I think Wesley's going to cost them that match, which would make perfect sense. I got my fingers crossed as Hank and Tank. Those guys just serve a title match. It's about time. And during that segment, the rock started kept blinking her eyes like nonstop. Anyway, main event time. Ethan Page to defend his world championship. I don't know why the hell they got him as champion. It's terrible. Versus Joel Hendry, the megastar of TNA. Special guest referee, Trick Williams. Um, before we get this match, Ethan Page, I don't know why they have him as champion. Ever since he's been champion, when he's on NXT, the fans boo. I get it because it's a hill, but that's not why the boom the boom because he's terrible. Anyways, this match went past the two hour and fifteen minute pay per view mark, went an extra forty minutes long, folks, and it was a slow, snail paced match. It was like shadow boxing. Basically, like Joe Hendry delivered a choke slam, Ethan Page would deliver one. Both guys deliver raises edge. Both guys deliver fallaway slams. Both guys deliver suplexes. 
Both guys never closed lines. Um, Ethan Page started to try to get himself disqualified on purpose because he couldn't keep Joe Hendry down for a free count. And but Trick Williams will not let him do that. Then Ethan Page shoved uh, Joe Hendry into Trick Williams, knocked down Trick Williams. Then Ethan Page grabs hold of the NXT World Championship, brings in the ring. Our referee has come out at this point, and he purposely DDTs him on the belt. The referee saw it, sure disqualified Ethan Page, and instead he goes for a fast count. And Trick Williams stopped it. And Trick Williams is like, what the hell, man? I might figure out at this point, maybe this referee is a personally bought referee of Ethan Page. But Trick Williams stopped it. As they was arguing, Ethan Page low blow Joe Hendry, Razor's Edge. Still your NXT World Champion, Ethan Page. Joe Hendry at this match was not on his A game at all. You can tell that, folks. I don't know. He was just off. After the match, Pete Dunne attacked Trick Williams like he said he was going to do NXT. Pulled him out of the ring. Bit her in on the outside. They're going to fight next Tuesday night because that graphic showed up after that. Um, overall, check out the tag team title match. The North American Man's title match. The Wesley West match. And the other three matches. Not exciting. It was like 50-50 pay-per-view this time. And the next pay-per-view for NXT announces the tradition of Halloween Havoc. I love that. WCW needs to do it. Now NXT is doing it. And sometimes when they do Halloween Havoc, folks, they do like a thing where the match will start. They'll spin a wheel and be like a street fight or a Singapore cane match or a casket match. And then sometimes on the Halloween Havoc, they don't do that. So I'm curious if that's going to take a fact to this pay-per-view or not. Um, there you have it, folks. Let me know below in the comments what you thought of NXT No Mercy. What was your favorite moment? Your least favorite moments? And if anybody knows who this mystery woman is, please let me know below so I have an idea who she is. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.